I'm James, and today we're stepping into the stories behind the people and the software that has helped shape our world. At the Microsoft's 50th celebration in Redmond, Washington, I had the extraordinary opportunity to catch up with some legendary Microsoft employees who are my coworkers. And I'm thrilled to have had the opportunity to talk with Michael Pizzo, who is a true trailblazer with over 38 years at Microsoft. He began his journey integrating Excel with relational data and went on to play a pivotal role in the design of ODBC, OLEDB, and ADO.net, driving standards and innovation in every step of the way when it relates to data. Now, as a principal architect and engineer in the identity division, his influence is felt in modern tools like Microsoft Graph and so many more. So let's dive in to his incredible story. All right, one, I gotta start. You're wearing a PDC shirt. My very first PDC was right here on campus. Do you have like a favorite developer, you know, moment when it comes <laughs> to like conferences, things like that? I mean, that's my big tent story that I tell everybody. Um, there were a lot of successes, but the one that stands out the most was not a success. Um, I was speaking in front of several thousand people um, about a uh, technology we had called Microsoft ODBC, Open Database Connectivity. Yeah, yes. And in the early days, there was pushback, oh, it's complicated and it's hard to do, and it's hard to write an ODBC driver to talk to databases. The, the technology was uh, enabled applications to talk to relational databases um, through a driver technology like printer drivers. Yeah. Um, and it was revolutionary at the time. Prior to that, applications had to compile into them code to yes. know the database that they're talking to. Yeah. So. The whole point of this talk was I was going to start with a completely vanilla um, laptop, download an SDK from our Microsoft.com website, and build a driver live in front of the audience and yeah. then show that I could use that to connect to and actually query the data. Everything had been practiced before. Everything was great. Had it down. Had it nailed. Uh, it came time to do the production. I was in front of this big audience. I did the opener. Everything was going well. I got my laptop opened. I connected to the internet and I went to www.microsoft.com and I got an error. Oh my goodness. And I tried it again and I got an error and somebody from backstage says Microsoft.com is down. Oh my God. This is the early days of the internet and yeah. it wasn't quite, you know, the reliable thing it can be today. And so my entire rest of you know 45 minutes of my presentation was kind of tanked because i didn't have that now fortunately i had a floppy disk in my backpack that i was then nice. able to clumsily load and but you know threw everything off and um i actually did the presentation twice the second time to a small room in the basement and uh everything went of course perfectly yeah, then yeah. and there was actually somebody there that said i came to your earlier uh, uh presentation yeah. it was great but i wanted to see the demo work so i came back again oh. to see it that means you just so, won them over, you yes, know what I mean? And got yeah. Oh, that's so cool. But yeah, that's my yeah. that's my primary memory. I think. Thank um, you for bringing that back up, by I, the way. I think, <laughs> honestly, I talk to this a lot of people. A lot of people have stage fright. They yeah. work on amazing products. One of my favorite things in my job is, like, showing the amazing things that we make. Mm -hmm. And also helping, like, getting PMs and engineers on stage and showing the awesome things that they built, right? So I think these stories, right, not everything is going to go right. Actually, I honestly believe my boss, Scott, will say the same, and anyone will. It's like, literally, that sometimes the best real things are the things that go wrong. Because yep. it means it's real. Yep. That is a real thing that can really happen. Yep. Uh, we'll also talk about some good stuff. Or, we worked on all sorts of data stuff over yeah. the years. Uh, EF, we're talking ADO.net, um, uh, OData, all this stuff. How has the world of data evolved <laughs> in these years? I also worked at Canon, working on printer software, by the way. Uh -huh. So all the things, all those letters <laughs> all made sense to me, by the way. So, awesome. uh, but how has that data just evolved and how are you looking at it now? So, or are you still even looking at it now? I am, I am. Um, it's interesting. I, I was asked to write a foreword for a book on um, ADO.net, um, one of our .NET data access technologies. And thinking about writing this this uh, forward, I kind of did a little bit of self-analysis. Mm. And I realized that if I was my college self looking at myself now um, and trying to explain what I did and why I was enthusiastic about data, yeah. it would be difficult. Because, yeah. um, you know, in college I was athletic, I was on the track team, I was, you know, outside, you know, 
went to parties and, and everything else. And it's not quite the same then personality to data. To data. Yeah. Um, and so I went on in the forward to describe the importance of data mm -hmm. and how data really is fundamental to everything we do. It was true today. It's even more true today um, in terms of, you know, everything you do is really about data yeah. um, and understanding data and being able to work with data and the innovations that we've made at Microsoft over the years for how applications and how users can interact with, use and leverage data have just really been um, earth shattering. They've, yeah. they've really changed the landscape. Um, so I went on and I went to argue how it has evolved over time. And I ended by saying, um, you know, so if data is really important. I'm very proud of the work that I've done as a data architect. It's still not the first thing I bring up, though, in cocktail parties. Yeah, that totally makes sense. I think what's cool is like, is that evolution, right? Where like now, you know, I'm not someone that's uh, writing a lot of like SQL queries manually anymore. And I'm using EF or I'm using SQLite. I'm using these sort of like uh, ORMs on top of it and there. Um, is there a piece of, I mean, you've worked on a lot of different pieces. Like, is there one that one you're either like, wow, this is like a moment in time, like this, like I'm so, this is like the, the thing I'm like the most proud of mm -hmm. and or like, oh, I wish we had done something really different because it could have been a, even better that we maybe got to do later and never got to do. Yeah, so I think the actual standardization of the technologies, uh, Microsoft ODBC in the day, and then more recently OData, um, is something that has really been impactful for me that I've really enjoyed. Um, it's been challenging. Uh, when you do standards work, there's 50% technology. Uh, you know, it's got to work. It's got to work across a broad variety of scenarios. It's 50% um, pragmatic. You have to do something that your product can use and yeah. it'll help advance your company forward. And it's 50% political. Yeah. Um, and managing those three things can be very, very challenging. And I remember when uh, we were taking Microsoft ODBC through the standards track um, and we were at the international standards uh, meeting where we were trying to ratify it as a uh, ISO standard. Mm -hmm. And the Japanese contingent had come in and they had a paper arguing against adopting oh, wow. the call level interface. And in side conversations at lunch and so forth, came to find out that they really wanted to support it. They wanted to endorse it, but they didn't feel like they had had as a country enough influence on this international standard to adopt it. Oh, wow. And so they had a document, the document actually looked like an email that I had sent like six months earlier on some of my concerns and things that we were addressing. And so over the course of the next three days, I worked with them to draft a series of papers that we then brought to the, the community, uh, to the standards organization and voted on and approved at the end of which they were able to. And so these were Japanese yeah. uh, contributions with their and my name wow. on them. Oh, cool. um, and at the end of that, we were able to unanimously approve the ODBC as the SQL call level interface. Oh, wow. That's awesome. So it was just, it, it just felt great to have uh, balanced those three things and done something that I think really fundamentally, as I was saying before, change the industry by enabling more applications to do more interesting things with data. Now, it's really cool that the work here at Microsoft enabled you to kind of go through that journey and like have that story and memory, the memory Absolutely. of something that like you not only just got to start the creation with, but that collaboration effort too, I think is like really special and near and dear to like what we do here at Microsoft, obviously. But how has like AI recently changed data? Because I've actually been seeing like Bob War and a bunch of other people like in the SQL Server space do a lot of really fascinating things with agents and AI. Like how has that impacted not only just how you think about data, but also like actually how our customers and our developers are interacting with data today? So a lot of what I've done in data access has been just that, making data more accessible, mm -hmm. more discoverable, more interoperable and so forth. Um, searchable to, and, and what AI does is it brings all that corpus of data to everybody through their phone. And so if somebody wants to know the weather in Zimbabwe, um, they can find that out. Um, but more importantly with AI, if somebody wants to understand why the weather is the way it is in Zimbabwe, they can find that out. Yeah. Um, and so just the, the huge incremental now, uh, advancements in our ability to understand the world around us uh, through the data that AI is able to present to us is, is just 
um, foundational. It all comes back to the data at the it end all, of the day, right? See, yeah. see how I did it that? It really does. It really does. <laughs> so what has kept you here at Microsoft? It's been, what, 35, 30? 30, 30, this will be 38 years this year. What's kept you here for all those years? Um, so, of course, you've got to say the people, and that's certainly true. Yeah. Um, it's also the opportunity to have an impact. Um, I came to Microsoft straight out of college. Um, I had no background in data or databases or anything yeah. like that. Um, and I was put in a position where several years later, I found myself in these international standards meetings. And I was there with the people who literally invented SQL. Oh, wow. Um, and the amount of context that they had and the amount of just history there seemed insurmountable. Yeah. Um, and it was very intimidating for the first couple meetings. And then after two or three meetings, I realized that these people were looking at me as a, as a representative of Microsoft to help pioneer the next wave, to help yeah. understand not just how you can have a common language for posing your query, but how you can have a common interface for applications to interact with that data. And that, I think, was a true testament to Microsoft to take this kid out of college, give him a couple years, and then put him in a situation where, you know, he's really able to have that kind of influence and that kind of impact on the industry. Yeah, uh, that's so cool. I mean, I love the journey because I think that I get to work with so many amazing people, we all do, that are going through that journey as well. Uh -huh. um, last question for you, what has you the most excited about the future? Like, what's next? What is the thing that's on mind? It, it could be AI, but it doesn't have to be AI, by the way. <laughs> oh, I think it has to be AI. I, I think that's, that's in my... I believe it's the uh, right it, answer. Yeah. I think it's in my contract that yeah. it's, it's AI. Um, I, I think it does relate to AI, and it relates to how we are able to take AI and really use it. So we're experimenting in a lot of areas, and we've got a lot of... I mean, we had great things demonstrated today with some different thoughts about how AI can make life easier and more accessible. Um, I think that's just the tip of the iceberg. Um, I think that um, really responsibly using AI and finding out how it can not be a distraction, but an enhancement to our lives. Um, there's some good thinking there, and I, but I think it's still nascent. Um, and I'm excited to see where it goes. Yeah, I feel like we're still in that beginning phase, right? Uh, and we've lived through that. I lived through the mobile generation. Mm -hmm. As I was early on the cell phone, I feel like we're in that 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 moment, but it's moving faster and exciting. Well, Michael, thank you so much for your time. I really you. appreciate it. It was good to talk oh. to you. It was such an amazing opportunity to sit down with Michael and pick his brain for a little bit to see where data and AI and so much more is going. This is just one video in my series of different interviews that I did at the 50th celebration. So make sure you like, subscribe, and do all the things that you do over here on YouTube, wherever you're watching or listening to this. I want to thank Michael and Microsoft for giving me the opportunity. And if you want to see more and interact more with Microsoft employees and learn so much more about what's happening in the world of AI, make sure to join me and so many more at Microsoft Build this May. Build.microsoft.com to register online or in person. See you there.